Hi everyone. On September 24th, the Holy Orthodox Church celebrates the memory of our righteous father, Copris of Palestine. Now, St. Copris had a rather ignominious beginning. As it turns out, his mother and many of the villagers were being pursued by the Hagarenes. The Hagarenes wanted to kill them. She was, at that time, extremely pregnant with Copris and didn't know what to do. So she took refuge behind a dunghill, a pile of manure that happened to be outside of the monastery where St. Theodosius the Cenobiarch was the abbot. St. Theodosius, of course, was a great, great saint of the Orthodox Church who lived around the time of the Fourth Ecumenical Council in 451 AD, came to Palestine, founded the monastery, and it attracted many, many people. So the woman, in her distress, in her extreme stress, started feeling birth pangs and having nowhere else to go. She gave birth to Copris there on the pile of dung. Immediately after this was over, the poor mother, no doubt because of the physical things she had to endure and the stress above all, reposed in the Lord. Copris, however, was left there all by himself until St. Theodosius, the Cenobiarch himself, discovered the baby on the pile and immediately his heart went out to him and he named him Copris. And of course, Copris in Greek, copri, refers to dung or to manure. So how would you like to be saddled with a name like that? One can only think of the parallels in modern American society, but yet our saint was to dignify even an undignified name in many glorious ways. St. Theodosius took the young baby back to the monastery and they had many goats that they wanted to use to feed the baby with goat's milk. As it turned out, there was one goat in particular that came down the mountain whenever the time was ripe for the young Copris to be fed. And this continued for a long while until Copris was able to actually take solid meat. Now, Copris began to be adorned with all of the virtues, a very humble, very dedicated and pious man, so much so that he has to be entered upon the ranks of the saints that we know of that were able to actually tame the animals. And at one point, an animal came down and was found in the monastery garden eating lettuce. Copris was going to have none of this, so he grabbed the bear's ear and pulled him out of the garden and told him not to return. Well, not too much longer after that, when they were going up the mountain to do some of the normal chores of the monastery, the bear, the same one, appeared again. And this time, he took a swipe at the mule that was carrying their supplies, thereby injuring the animal. Again, Copris walked over to the bear, grabbed him again by the ear, and said, enough, stop this. You have injured this mule, and because of this, you're going to be the one to carry the supplies until the animal heals. And he took all the supplies, put it on the back of the bear, and on they went. Copris, of course, was far above nature in many other things as well. At one point, there was a gigantic pot of lentils that were cooking for the brotherhood of the monastery, and it began to overflow. And Copris, looking around and realizing that there was no ladle there that he could catch the overflow with, reached his hands directly into the boiling pot of water to try and stop it. And lo and behold, the water stopped boiling immediately, and Copris's hands were not injured at all. The man considered, consi continued along this particular path for many, many, many years. He was adorned with all sorts of grace and piety and was beloved 
by the brethren in the monastery, and especially, of course, the one that had saved him, St. Theodosius, the Cenobiarch. Well, at some point along the way, St. Theodosius reposed, and yet St. Copris still lived on and on, even reaching the age of 90 years old. And at that point, he had a vision of St. Theodosius, who said to him, Copris, the time for your repose is drawing near. Come and join me in the place which has been prepared for you. Well, Copris continued on even after that, and in fact, at that great age, he was ordained a priest. And not long afterward, he began to fall ill and finally reposed in the Lord, taking his place alongside St. Theodosius, the Cenobiarch, his mentor, the one whom he loved, the one whose prayers he invoked, even over that wild bear that caused them so much trouble. So, despite the fact that he was given a name that St. Theodosius innocently thought only reflected his origins, because of that name, he has now made that name into something glorious as it ranks among the saints of God. May we also, when we are perhaps feeling a little bit down about ourselves in one way or the other, understand that with our cooperation with the Lord's grace, we can overcome all things and turn even those things that seem sour and degrading into something wonderful, beautiful, and radiant.